Zakisha Brown will say that it's so cool to be from Africa. I'm so cool I went to Africa. Back at school they were laugh at us. Now it's cool to be black as fuck. Now it's cool to be from Africa. But what Amaya will say that it's a blessing to be from Africa. You know why I'm saying that? Our history alone is rich. Our land is blessed with natural resources and our soil is fertile. It's fertile to the extent that anything that you sow in Africa grows. Nappy bricks will tell you that Africa soil is so fertile that even if you plant human beings, they will grow. That is what makes Africans blessed. And it's time for each and every African out there to grab this opportunity and cherish it. It's a blessing to be from Africa. Happy New Year from the northern part of Nigeria. I'm currently in Kanu. I'm saying that this year, I'm not joking with you guys. This year, all I want to do is to travel all African countries to bring you positive stories that will inspire you to go out there and be part of the change that you and I are looking for. Be part of the change. Be part of that solution, not the problem. Africa belongs to you and I, both Africans on the continent and Africans abroad. I'm in a farm right now. I'm a farmer. But this farm doesn't belong to me. It belongs to a young Nigerian lady who decided that she wants to go into farming, which is incredible, right? Seven hectares of land. Jeez, I know you can't wait for me to have this interview. But hey, before I bring you this interview, do me a favor, like this video and share it to friends and family. Let's grow together. Can we reach 700,000 subscribers before January ends? Please, we're on our way to a million. Be part of this family by subscribing. Please, it's very important. Come with me. Let me go talk to this young and inspiring Nigerian woman, Aya Maya. Halima, it feels so good to see you in person. Yeah, finally. <laughs> I mean, your life alone is inspirational. Do you even know that? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I mean, you've done something amazing that I think the whole world needs to come and see you. You know, because of you, I had to fly all the way from Ghana, not just to Lagos or Abuja, but I had to, to, Kano. Come to Kano. To yeah, see welcome you. to Kano. Thank it's, you so I'm much. I'm sure you won't regret it. How, how do you say thank you in Hausa? Nagode. <laughs> oh, Nagode. Nagode Allah. I know that one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Halima, you've done something amazing. And thank so many you. people don't know why I'm saying this. Let me ask you. To educate the people out there, who are you? Um, I'm a farmer, <laughs> not just a rice farmer actually. Since right now we're doing vegetables in between periods. So I'm a farmer, I'm a chef, and um, yeah, that's what I studied. I studied agric. You studied agric when yeah, in school? In were school. you born and raised in Kano? Yeah, I, I lived in Kano all my life. I mean, have you left Kano to stay in abroad no, or something? No, no, I, I've lived here all my life. You, I mean, you've you achieved everything here in Kanu. Yeah, in Kanu, Nigeria, within Kanu and Jigawa. Uh, then why are Africans saying that it's not possible in Africa? Of course it is. It's just that we don't know. We don't know and we actually have certain, you know, mindset and misconceptions. You know, for example, that um, what inspired, I, I actually wanted to, to do something. Mm. A lot of people think that women can't do, can't go into farming okay. and women can't do certain things. So, you know, I, it's a passion for me and I knew that I could do it. I wanted to bring it out, you know, and make something out of it. And yeah. Do you know where I <laughs> saw you from? I saw you from TED Talk. <laughs> <laughs> and also I saw you did the Maggie advert and you were saying that, Oh, my name is Halima, a 22-year-old farmer. And I'm like, 22? I, I used to I'm 22. not 22 anymore. I'm 23, getting to 24, so I'm not 22 anymore. Halima, this is shocking. <laughs> 23 years old, and you own 
seven hectare farm i mean i i mean i didn't see the rice because i saw the rice farm yeah but now i'm seeing vegetables yeah we're doing veggies now between seasons yeah so the rice season is over now yeah it's it's actually starting in a few weeks oh, okay. so we're, we're we're kind of clearing for we're kind of being prepared okay. for the for the next season yeah so you decided to grow vegetables yes. Anyway, you're amazing. <laughs> Thank you. Like, l let's go back, you know. How did you get all this inspiration to start something like this? I mean, how old were you when you decided to enter into entrepreneurship? How old were you? Um, I was really young. I was, I, I think I was born with the entrepreneur mind. Oh. <laughs> Ever since I was little, I, you know, I, I do this and that. Okay. Little stuff. So, mm. what did you start with? Your first entrepreneurship um, business? Poultry. I started with little birds. That time I was around 10, 12. Yeah. And then... You started poultry? Yeah, I started with... How many with, birds did you have that time? Um, I started with around 100. Yeah, 100 birds. Is it, was it profitable? Chicken. It was. It was really profitable. I think that's where I got the, the whole, you know, motivation, the push when you do something and you gain out of it. So it was it was awesome that time and I was young so I was just looking forward to the future. After high school you decided to go and study a Greek yeah. in the university? Yeah, I've always loved farming. I've always, you know, loved agriculture. I was always a fan of nature and you know, it's actually very fulfilling seeing just like this uh, vegetable, seeing them grow out oh. just like your babies. <laughs> yeah. Halima, oh my goodness, you know what? Let me know, like you're a poultry farmer, mm -hmm. you switch from being a poultry farmer and then now you grow crops. crops. Yes, I'm not into livestock anymore, maybe in the future. Yeah, but... What what made you start this one? Um, I think I, I love the fact, the green, you know, I love the fact that you you get to see a beautiful environment mm. you you grow something out of nothing <laughs> so yeah and i i like this is where my mind is at the moment mm. yeah how long have you been doing this um i started in in my fourth year at the university i was doing my practical year and then i started my own personal farm as well Halimo. Here in Africa, they always tell us to go to school, become a lawyer, a doctor, an engineer. Yeah, you know, when I started, everybody would be like, why would you go all the way to school and study agric? And I knew what I was doing, so I, sometimes I don't even give answers to that. Did they ever tell you that you're getting crazy for being a farmer? Not, not directly, but that's what people actually see. You know? They think you're crazy? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but do you see yourself as a crazy person? I don't. That's why it doesn't bother me. I, I know that agriculture is the future, especially in Nigeria. We have amazing land, you know, we have everything. So it's, it's the future, literally. I mean, like, no, I don't even want to leave. I just wish I can also buy a land in here. And yeah, you can, you, can, you can just, <laughs> um, you know, relocate and relocate. stay. Yeah. I, I have to relocate. When I go here, I'm seeing people working on the farm. I'm yeah. actually not seeing you doing the farming <laughs> today, but I see people doing the farming. How many people work for you now? Well, we have full-time workers, mm. which are about maybe eight, ten. Okay. And then we have the, you know, when we have some activities like weeding, transplanting, we get a lot of people to do that because, you know, it takes, it needs detail and it's human labor. Mm. So sometimes you can see up to 100, 150 people in the farm working. It's, it's not small, so, yeah. so it takes a lot of people. Mm. But you, mm -hmm. we don't live here. We have to travel all the way from yeah. Kano, like forty-five minutes drive. Yeah, forty-five minutes, to one hour. Mm -hmm. So, who, which people protect this farm for you? The the farm, the villagers. They, yeah. they, they protect the farm for you. They protect the farm. We have, um, for example, right now, mm. since it's it's crops, it's we have the vegetables. They're always growing. We have people that stays there that lives with their family just close by so they're the one protecting the the place seven hectares how, how many land are you cultivating right now out of the seven hectares Sorry? 
like you have seven hectares of land mm -hmm. how many land are you using i right do now? for the rice i do the whole farm but for the vegetables this is about one one hectare wow. yeah for the we have peppers we have onions tomatoes a little bit of eggplant and um and a little bit of beans, but the beans are, is actually for the you know fencing so, for the sides. Yeah, we have the the, the bigger bean. Hmm. But uh, how do you do the irrigation in here? You know, we have machines. It's it, since it's not the raining seasons, we have we have machines, and um, it's you know the vegetables don't really need a lot of water, so we hmm. do like once a week, sometimes twice. Okay. Yeah. Alima, there's so many questions that I know so many people are asking like, hey, Maya, you're not asking her how she started. You're not asking her the capital that she invested in this farm. I mean, did you start with a huge capital from the beginning or you started from, from the From the from the very beginning, beginning, I started with small capital, actually. Yeah, but, you know, farming doesn't need a lot of capital. Okay. You can just get in since we have rainfall it's nature okay. we have the rainfall we have the um the weather we have the soil and most of our soil in nigeria is very fertile it's very good so you can just go in with with little capital it's it's basically just like free with a little token oh, okay <laughs> so yeah. yeah in terms of acquiring the land acquiring the land is a bit tough but um the whole process is is not it's not really hard. What has been the major challenge that you faced when you started this farming? Uh, okay, um, you know, just like every business, you know, failure is just a part of life. I feel like you have to fail before you, you get to, you know, you have to fail to know your mistakes. Exactly. When I started, the first time I failed, I failed and I lost a lot of money because I spent a lot. It was irrigation. It wasn't rainfall. So it was irrigation and I got really bad seeds. Mm. And that took me like twice the time of cultivating, which is twice the expenses, twice the labor. And then at the end, we got very little um, produce. So I failed the first time. And then tried uh, I tried again last and I got flood. It was really good, and then it's, we the had rain, flood. It had more rainfall. Yeah, yeah, and it washed away everything. So we literally didn't turn up with anything. How did you feel that time? Well, I told you, I, I, I started business at an early stage, so I kind of wasn't really stressed out because I, I knew that there's something, you know. Like ups and downs. Yeah, and, and I knew that there was something waiting for me yeah so and from that mistakes from that failure I, I i i learned a lot of things you know when you do when you fail in something you can't you can't go back to that again you can't really do that mistake again yeah i really love your mindset yeah <laughs> I, I i definitely love your mindset i just want us to uh, move around the farm a little bit okay. and i'll ask you my next question okay so Maya, this is the carriage, a local oh, carriage we okay. use in, the farmers use in transporting the goods, you know, the produce, the machineries, the pumping machines and stuff, everything needed in the farm. So wow. that's what they use in transporting it. Th this is purely local. Yeah, just yeah. like the pickup truck. Exactly. So this is what they, 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 they do. And these cows are really huge, man. Yeah, they are. And they're organic. So this is like an exercise for them. So it keeps <laughs> them growing the muscles, the, oh. the meat. <laughs> Yeah. I really like how the vegetables are fresh and healthy. Yeah. You know how I feel right now because these things are so expensive in the market <laughs> and I'm seeing it all over. Like I feel like cooking right now. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> everywhere. I love pepper, you know, so I would love to cook right now. Alima, where do you sell this? Here in Nigeria or you export them? Yeah, no, no. I sell it here in Nigeria. But hopefully, maybe in the future, I'll be exporting it to other countries, you know. Yeah, yeah, start from other African countries. Yeah, yeah hopefully. So I'll, I'll, I'll make sure I get to you a uh, buyer in Ghana. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> thank you. You know, we actually dry them up. You dry the pepper yeah. up? Yeah, the peppers. We dry them and then we you can store it or sell them dried. Oh, okay. So you don't, yeah. you don't sell it like fresh? In the beginning, maybe around this time, you can sell it fresh. And then when it starts getting very low in the market, mm you dry them like when it starts getting abundant hmm. then you dry them up 
Halima, where mm -hmm. do you see yourself in the next 10 years? <laughs> I don't want to say it. <laughs> why? <laughs> you know what? I, I'm so proud of you. <laughs> and I'm going to save your contacts that in the next 10 years, I have to call Halima and ask you for $1 million. <laughs> you know, so I need to know, where, where do you want to see yourself in the next 10 years? I just know that it's 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 going to be a success, inshallah. So, <laughs> Alima, we have so many young Africans watching us right now mm -hmm. who always think that it's not possible in Africa. Mm -hmm. They have to, I mean, travel abroad before they make it. Some of them even go the back way. I mean, go through the Mediterranean Sea before they go to Europe and all that, just for greener pastures. You have made it in here. I'm not saying you've made it, but you've done it. You've made it possible. 24 years old. If you have a message to young Africans watching us right now, what would that message be? Speak from the heart. <laughs> okay, I, I I know that it's 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 never too early. It's never you're never too young. You know, if you see something, you just just bring it out. Just do it. Don't be afraid of failure. I mean, failure is it's actually a good thing because that's what keeps you moving. When you fail, you just want to beat that. You know, and and make it. So I, what, whenever you see something and you just bring it out, make sure we all have something in us. We can't just take it to the grave. We have to do something to see what we're good in. So just, just do what, 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 what you have. <laughs> just did, bring it out. Did, did anybody in Africa ever mm -hmm. told you that you're too young to do what you're doing? Yeah, at some point, I don't even like to say my age. I feel kind of maybe embarrassed at some point to say my age because a lot of people will be like, oh my god, you're too young for this, you know? So. Too young for this? <laughs> yeah. Too young to be a farmer? <laughs> for so many things, so. Then, which means if I give you the opportunity or the chance to change one thing in Africa, Halima. In Africa? What, yeah, or in Nigeria, mm -hmm. what would that thing be? What will you change? I think our mindset, you know? we are all our minds are all corrupt so we i what I, one thing i want to i just want to do in a blink of an eye is to just change nigeria and make it a better place you know change the economy change the mindsets clean our minds <laughs> we all have the same thinking in nigeria we all have the same mindset we are so corrupt so i think that's that's what every true Nigerian really wants a great Nigeria, a, a, a green Nigeria. Do, do you know how to sing the Nigerian National Anthem? Of course I do. Can we sing it and end the video? <laughs> okay. Right. Oh, compatriot, Nigeria, call obey to serve our fatherland with love and strength and faith. <laughs> so it's time for each and every Nigerian out there to, to serve, serve the yeah. fatherland. I mean, some of you sing the national anthem without even understanding. Yeah. You're serving your fatherland in this way. And I will tell you that a lot of Nigerians out there are proud of you. Thank you. Africa is proud of you. Never stop what you're doing. I'm going to come back again because of you. I'm coming back to Kano again. Yeah, come back to relocate. Just relocate. Uh, we, we're I'll, going to I'll, get you a place to stay. Please, buy me a land. I also <laughs> want to be a farmer. Okay. Yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this amazing episode with Halima. Don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to subscribe. And don't forget to share to inspire somebody else. It's your favorite village boy, Mr. Ghana, baby. And I'm out. Peace out.